Hey everyone. Uh, so this is part three of Rethinking Hell. We're going to talk about conditional immortality, also known as annihilationism. It is a Christian doctrine. It's a Christian belief that the wicked, the unsaved, do not go it, do not go to hell to suffer conscious eternal torment forever. It's the belief that the soul is not immortal, like many people who believe in hell. One of their main things is that, well, the soul is immortal. So it's not, uh, it's, it, the question is, where will you go forever, heaven or hell? So this is based on uh, Greek thought at the time, because the New Testament arrived uh you know, where Greek philosophy, Greek thought, what, I mean, the New Testament was written in Greek. So there was, you know, Paul goes and speaks uh, to the, to the Greek people and tries, uh, you know, to, to, to not debate, but to speak with them and convince them about uh, Jesus and stuff like that. So conditional immortality is the belief that we have this world, everybody dies here on, on earth uh, in our present state, and then there's judgment. Uh, those who are saved go to eternal life in a new, resurrected, uncorruptible body without the curse of sin, to uh, live in basically Eden, uh, restored um, so in the end, the unsaved, the wicked, the unbelieving, all of these people that are supposed to go and suffer uh, eternal conscious torment, no, they're judged. Perhaps there is a time of suffering, um, but eventually they die. Just like uh, somebody who commits murder, they're put in uh, jail, perhaps, you know, a couple of years, but they have a date for their death sentence. They get the electric chair, lethal injection. This uh, punishment is eternal, right? Uh, this punishment, uh, they ain't coming back from it. All right. And they cease to be at least, you know, from this for, you know, uh, the on this earth, right? It's like, you ain't coming back from uh, the uh, electric chair. And this is the same uh, con concept. So conditional immortality isn't some new thing, the, you know, new age thought uh, that's occurring. The, the, this is something that uh, many church, church fathers seem to uh, have believed. If you read their writings, there are some that believed in eternal conscious torment. You have uh, Dante's Inferno uh, that really kind of, painted the picture of the devil with the horns and pitchforks and torturing you and stuff like that not realizing actually that the devil isn't the king of hell the devil is sent to hell uh you know the it's he's not king down there that's his his punishment is uh destruction uh in, in hell so let's uh I'm, what i'll do is uh, i'm going to do the share screen and i'm going to try and not make this too long and i'm not going to ramble Probably will, but we'll see. Share screen. I guess optimize and share my screen. Sorry. Okay, here you go. Conditional immortality in uh, Christian theology. Christian theology, conditionalism, or conditional immortality is a concept in which the gift of immortality is attached um, conditional upon belief in Jesus Christ. The doctrine is based in part upon another biblical argument that the human soul is naturally mortal. Uh, immortal life, eternal life, is therefore granted by God as a gift. The first time I ever heard of conditional immortality was when I fell upon Edward Fudge and his lecture, The Fire That Consumes, a biblical and historical study of hell. If you're open-minded, if hell never sat right with you, then perhaps you, you should uh, uh, look, at, look at this video over here. Uh, just want to stop the share screen for one second.
Okay, yeah, sorry, I, I wasn't sure if I was recording. It's too bad when I do the share screen that I can't pop it up, but anyways, you don't have to look at my ugly mug. The point is to look at the share screen anyways. All right, the video thumbnails minimized, optimized, uh, full screen video clip sharing. Sorry, guys, I'm just going to do it one more time. Maybe it's because I said optimize video clip. Let me see if it, if this is better. Yeah, okay, there it is. Now you can see my beautiful mug. All right. As a Christian, I guess I, I still got to work on vanity. So if you're open-minded, if you're interested in a very biblically backed up biblically look at this lecture if the uh, hell's never sat right with you if you have uh, been turned off by christianity specifically because you can't believe in a religion that that has something where people are tormented forever and ever and ever uh, amen check out this this was the first the first uh, look and this lecture was amazing. It's like one hour, but this guy just, you know, humble man and just really opened my eyes. Uh, there's also rethinking hell. There's also uh, this pod podcast on, on YouTube too, if you're uh, interested uh, in it with uh, Chris Date. Um, lots of discussion. And, and he also has some cool debates against uh, Christians that believe in uh, the uh, eternal conscious torment. And I think this uh, podcast was actually opened up. See here, Edward Fudge. These were the, the first two. Uh, so you can also look at this, the debates and stuff like that. Debates are really good because you, you get to, to hear both sides and may make up your mind. So here is Got Questions. This is a Christian site. And here's the question. Is the human soul mortal or immortal? I'm not going to go through all of this, but without a doubt, the human soul, sorry, this is where I'm reading. Without a doubt, the human soul is immortal. And I just assumed, hey, you know, it probably is. The Bible must say that. Let's look at the New Testament, James. over here james five twenty. let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from what is it say it with me death okay you're not so look the soul can die then because if if you're saving you know will save his soul from death so obviously the punishment of sin just like genesis says the punishment of of sin is death. You would think if there was something as important as, hey, you better get this one right, guys, or else you're going to be tormented and burning and, and worms eating you forever and ever and ever and uh, multiply that by a zillion years and then square that and then after add uh, eternity and then more. You know what I mean? No, uh, I think that the, that warning probably would have been all throughout the Old Testament too. And the Israelites don't have really a concept of eternal conscious torment in hell. They believe in Sheol, which is basically the common grave of the dead, uh, where, where we sleep until we await uh, Judgment Day, the resurrection of the dead, and the Judgment Throne, the great day of the Lord. So... You, you can't you can't have like passages in the Bible, whether it's Old Testament, New Testament, that are like saying opposite things, contradicting themselves. That really doesn't work. And um, I to this, I see what appears as contradiction sometimes. But when I really, you know, go in and, and start looking for lectures and lecture, just like manically you know listen to these things i usually find my answers and they they really aren't wishful thinking i mean uh, the doctrine of hell kept me away from uh, christianity for 20 years i started my spiritual search when i was 20 and i uh, 
looked into everything but Christianity. I would read the Bible once in a while. Um, I also uh, had had issues with the, the Trinity. Uh, that's for another video. So if we look here, Matthew 10, 28. And fear not them which kill the body and soul, but are not able to kill the... Uh, sorry. Fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both body, uh, geez, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Okay. We look at the definition of destroy and destruction. It's the action or process of causing so much damage to something that it no longer exists or cannot be repaired. Demolition, these are other synonyms, stuff like that. Um, ruination, leveling, wrecking, the action or process of killing or being killed. Other uh, words that are similar like annihilation, hence annihilationism destruction so if we look at over here um gonna go to the passages of destruction you know just google destruction of the wicked bible verses and you will see that the lord destroys the wicked over and over destruction 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 okay whose end is destruction um these will pay the penalty of eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power, right? That one's pretty clear. There's a penalty. So the penalty of sin is death in, the, uh, in Genesis. And here it says these will pay the penalty of eternal destruction, eternal death. And this, uh, now you're away from the presence of the Lord, right? It's because when it's when we're saved, by the atoning sacrifice of Christ that we enter face to face the presence of the Lord, just like we were in the presence of the Lord when Adam and Eve were in the garden. And if you look at Revelation, the last few, uh, the last few uh, parts of it, it's, it says Eden restored. So God gets what he planned. He wants a family. He is a family in and of himself. Uh, in, in union with uh, the word of the word, the spirit, uh, and, and Yahweh, all uh, inside, like his his one beingness, his, his triune triune nature is, is a threefold uh, oneness. It means that God was never al alone. Because if you think of it, it says in the Bible, it doesn't say God is loving. It says God is love, and it is impossible to love without another right so if god has eternally been loved then he has eternally been in a family relationship then the angels were created that was an extension of his family and then man was created god bearing imagers god imagers right we're fallen images of god but we shall be like him we shall be like the son of god the only begotten son of god you have the angels that are referred to as sons of God, and then you have the only begotten son of God. Begotten doesn't mean created. Begotten, is, best way is to mean set apart, the one and only son of God, the son of God. If we uh, go over here, um, the wicked are overthrown and perish but the house of the righteous will stand. The wicked are overthrown and are no more. No more. Doesn't matter. On here, heaven, they're no more. Heaven and earth, they cease to be. But the house of the righteous stands firm. The wicked die and disappear. But the family of the godly stand firm. The wicked are overthrown and are no more. But the house of the righteous will stand. Look, man, we, we got perish. We got die. We got disappear. We got no more. Does that sound like eternal conscious torment? I don't think so. If we look at the definition of perish, perishing is to suffer death, typically in a violent, sudden, and untimely fashion. Perish, uh, using the word perish is good because, you know, 
God wanted us to be, to have eternal life with him. So living this life and, and dying and then being resurrected only to be judged. And then finally, again, uh, perishing in, in, in the fire that consumes, that is an untimely death because we're supposed to live eternally with uh, God, the father suffer complete ruin or destruction uh synonyms uh come, come to an end disappear vanish fade dissolve evaporate evaporate it makes me think uh well not not you know water evaporates but it often says you know the wicked will be burned up like like chafe you know like weeds you know when you burn up weeds in the fire they cease to exist now, a lot of the proponents to uh, eternal sadistic tor torturing will often use Mark. Um, sorry. And he said to him, truly, I tell you, some who are standing here will not. Oh, sorry. Yeah, this is where I want it. So if you look at Mark 9 towards uh, the end, you know, I take the time to prepare everything and then I, I, I get lost. Ah, here it is. OK, so causing to stumble. If anyone causes one of uh, these little ones, um, those who believe in him to stumble, it would be better for them to have a large millstone. And he starts, uh, you know, uh, it's better to have your foot cu cut off. Uh, you know, he's talking about it's better. It's, you know, it's better to, you know, lo lose your lose one. eye. Just give me a sec. Though, I'm, I'm doing a video. Um, and if your eye causes you to stumble, pluck it out, because it's better that you enter the kingdom of God with one eye than have two eyes and uh, be thrown into hell. So here, look, where the worm that eats them do not die and the fire is not quenched. Okay, so what they say is this here is a clear passage that the people in hell will be eaten by worms eternally like the worms will never die and you'll just continue being consumed by worms and a fire that never goes out that burns you forever they, they'll use this passage and to be honest there's not many passages that they can use but this is one that they really go to uh, the thing is is that for example when jesus was on the cross he was quoting was he quoting isaiah oh, am i right on that Anyways, he's quoting one of the prophets and he, he's on the cross and he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Okay. And they go, oh, they recognize the passage in the Jewish scriptures. He didn't quote the whole thing. He knew that the Jews were the people of the book. They, they, knew, the, the, they knew their Bible very well and they recognize it right away. So here, the worm that eats them do not die in the fire is not quenched. Well, if you go to Isaiah 66, 24, all right, it says, and they will go out here. I'll just highlight it. And they will go out and look on the dead bodies of those who rebelled against me. He's talking, God's talking, uh, God's saying this, and they will go out and look on, on the dead bodies of those who rebelled against me, the worms that eat them will not die, and the fire that burns them will not be quenched, and they will be loathsome to all of mankind. So wh what are these worms eating? These worms that will not die, and what is this burning fire that won't be quenched? What's it doing? It's, it's doing stuff to dead bodies. It's not doing stuff to eternal souls that are immortal. We saw over here that the, the soul is not immortal. James says, you know, um, James says, you know, hey, if you bring a, a sinner back from uh, wandering, you'll save his soul from death. Penalty of sin is death. And then after you have Matthew, hey, don't fear people that kill the body. Um, but fear the person that can kill or destroy both body and soul in hell. So why, why would the 
Bible contradict itself. Twice, it says, just in the New Testament. But they'll come over here and they'll focus on this here. I don't know if they don't know their Bible. I'm pretty sure they do. So are they, they like being deceptive on purpose? But as you can see, this word here was specifically said. Uh, I think these are the red passages by, by uh, Jesus. Okay. He, he's, he's writing it here. Okay. So this is part three of Rethinking Hell. Please uh, go see my other two videos. They're, they're in, uh, if you look at my channel, go to videos and go to the uh, archived videos. It's not that far down. And uh, please go see Rethinking Hell as well as Edward Fudge. I hope this uh, helps you on your journey because it really made a difference in mine. Stop, share. God bless. Have a great night, guys. See ya. Got Yeah, you know,